Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another installment of How to Convert Chaos Cultists. This time around, we're looking at the spookiest of all the cults, and that is of course, the Night Lords. I'll be guiding you through the techniques used to build this model that you see here, whilst also giving you some tips on how to build your own cultist warbands. The basis of this conversion is another one of my favourite kits for converting, the Gene Sealer Neophyte set. Not only does this kit give you all the needed weapon options that your cultists can take, but it also fits nicely into our theme. What I'm looking to do here is to give our cultists the appearance that they come from a heavily industrialized and polluted world. With skies filled with smoke, it's likely that the perpetual darkness and strife would appeal to the Night Lord's sensibilities, making their cults take firmer roots in these sorts of environments. As a result, the cultists would have more industrial base equipment as well as some degree of mutation. This reasoning makes the Neophyte kit fit into the theme we're looking to create perfectly. So begin by removing a torso, legs and arms from the kit before cleaning them up. Before we can use these parts though, we need to remove any obvious cult iconography, like the symbol that we have hanging from the belt here. Depending on the position of these trinkets, you can either use a knife or some clippers to remove the bulk of the symbol, and once this has been done, you will need to clean up the area that's left behind. You can be as particular about this as you like. With some careful scraping, you can pretty much remove all traces of these components. Alternatively, if you're looking to save a bit of time or effort, you can instead cover up the affected areas with some grenades or pouches later on. Once this has been completed, you can go ahead and continue to assemble the torso, legs and arms together. Now that we have the body, we now need a head. Taking inspiration from the Night Lords and their terror-inducing visage, I'll be opting you to use a skull-like head to represent a mask worn by the cultists. In the past, I've used skulls from the skull kit, but this time around, I will instead be using some of the Mortec Guard heads instead. These heads are a little bigger than the skull kit skulls and already have eyes in place. This makes them appear more like helmets rather than bare heads. However, they have a lot of extra protruding bits which need to be clipped, trimmed and filed off first. This not only allows the head to fit into the collar better, but also gives them a more generic skull appearance. It also gives us a very good excuse to get rid of that god-awful nose that the Mortec Guard inexplicably seem to have. With the head trimmed down, we now have a suitable Skeletor party mask for our Night Lord cultist. However, we do have one more thing to do before we can add it to the body, and that is to build a neck. The Mortec Guard's torsos have a neck built in, and the Gene Sealer heads come with necks attached. So we need to get a little creative and clip off a small section of sprue. We can then trim this down so that it's rounded off and a couple of millimeters in height. Do a dry run with this ad hoc neck to ensure that it's right size and height before gluing it and everything together. Another trait of the Night Lords is their penchant for flayed skin based fashion statements. If you've seen my Night Lord Space Marine and Necron Flayed One tutorials, you will already know where this one is going. So grab yourself a chain rasp. These guys can be found fairly cheaply on eBay, and one chain rasp should give you enough components for three or four cultists. We will be using some of their flowing robes to represent strips of flayed skin, but first we need to trim them down some. Grab yourself part of a chain rasp and use some clippers and a knife to cut away small strips, roughly a centimeter or two in length. Make your cut along the folds of the robes and try to be careful with your cuts as this will allow you to get much more strips from a single chain rasp. Once you have yourself a few skin strips, you can start to try them out in various locations on your cultist to see where it works best. You may need to make a few more slight trims and cuts to ensure you get a good fit, but once you're happy with how they fit, you can make things permanent with a little plastic glue. Keeping with the chain rasp set, we can take some other human body parts and stick them to the cultist in the form of grizzly trophies. So grab one of the outstretched arms on one of the chain rasps and clip it from the arm at the wrist. You then need to shave down the wrist so that it's rounded at the edges and also shave down the back of the hand so that you have a slightly smooth surface in which to glue it to the torso with. Where you add your hand is entirely up to you, although I would recommend the shoulders, back or belt 
as being the best places. At the moment, our dismembered hand and flayed skin is just kind of magically hanging there, and our miniature just looks like a Gene Stealer Cortis on his way to a costume party. So we need to chaosify him up a little bit with some spikes. But to keep that industrialized appearance intact, I will be instead be creating the effect of some welded on rebar. To do this, grab yourself some roughly one millimeter thick plastic rod. I'll include a link to some in the description. And then cut it down to around an inch or two to make it more manageable. With this smaller piece, you can super glue it one end of it to the armor of your cultist and hold it in place until it dries. Once it has dried, just clip it down to the desired length. By doing this, this way we avoid having to deal with the fiddly bits of a plastic rod. Then all you need to do is to repeat this process across the armor and the weapon. By adding this to the hand and the skin, we also create the appearance that they have been impaled onto these spikes and that's how they're being attached to the armor. You can also bend the rod to create a little more variance and disorder to the spikes. Simply heat it up with a hairdryer or with some hot water before carefully bending the rod. Glue this to the model as normal and clip away to the desired length. Finally, you can also get a little creative with this process too by drilling a hole into the bottom of a skull from the Citadel Skulls Kit and you can then glue this skull on top of the spike before adding another piece of rod protruding from the eye cavity. Once all your spikes are finished, you can go ahead and give your miniature a suitable paint job and a basing scheme. And you should be left with something that looks like this. So hopefully you learned a few tips to create some fairly simple Night Lords cultist conversions and enjoyed watching this video along the way. While it's inevitable that these kind of conversions will require extra costs or effort, I hope the results make that expense and time spent well worth it. So if you enjoyed this Chaos Cultist conversion video, then be sure to check out my previous guides where I've already tackled the Empress Children, Iron Warriors, Death Guard, and Word Bearers. Next up will be the Thousand Sons, but let me know if you have any other conversion ideas you'd like to see me tackle in the future. If you're looking to recreate this conversion, then you'll probably want to buy yourself the individual extra parts from Bits Resellers rather than buying full kits for them. I'd personally recommend Bitsbox as I've used them in numerous conversions and they're good friends of this channel. For your Neophytes kit, I would instead recommend checking out Firestorm Games using my affiliates link, which is in the description below. They offer up to 15% off the RRP of Games Workshop products, as well as loads of other Warhammer, and they ship worldwide. Plus, anything you buy after using that link will send a little bit of money my way, which you, I can put directly into producing more of these guides. And finally, let me just say a huge thank you to everyone who continues to support me on Patreon. Your continued help really does make the cost of producing these videos much easier. And if you'd like to lend me a hand too, I've included my Patreon page in the description below, where you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching, and goodbye.